In a recent video, I showed you a quick and easy way to create low poly terrain in Unity. However, there are a few issues with this approach. Firstly, due to the limited tools that Unity offers, it's impossible to create features like overhangs or caves. Additionally, it's difficult to paint colours onto the terrain in a way that looks clean, and there's no way to assign colours per face or to automatically assign colours based on the terrain's steepness. So today, I'm going to show you another approach, and what I believe to be the best approach, that allows us to achieve this using Blender. To start, insert a plane, and then scale it up in edit mode to an appropriate size. Then, with all edges selected, go to Edge and then Subdivide. In this bottom left menu, increase the number of subdivisions to 10. Then, do another subdivide and increase the number of subdivisions until you reach an appropriate level of fidelity for your project. Now, select the Sculpting tab at the top to begin editing your terrain. By default, Blender will mirror any edits you make, so you need to deactivate mirroring here under the Symmetry menu. Now, you can begin to sculpt your terrain. You can change the size and strength of your brushes at the top here. Blender provides a wide variety of different types of brushes, so feel free to experiment with them. As you can see, we're able to make features like overhangs using some of these brushes. Once you've created some terrain that you're happy with, it's time to colour the faces. As I mentioned at the start, it would be great to be able to automatically assign each face a colour based on its steepness. This is something that we can do using Blender's Shader Editor. Switch to the Shading tab and then add a new material. Firstly, we need to add a normal map node to get the normal of each face. Then, as we're only interested in the Z value of the normal, add a separate XYZ node and then connect the normal node to this so we can extract the Z value. Next, we will compare this Z value to a threshold value. If it's greater than this value, then we'll colour the face one colour, and if it's less than this value, we'll colour it a different colour. To do this, add a math node. Then, change the type to greater than, and connect the Z nodes to the first value. Then, set the second value to a threshold that will look good. This gives us either white or black for each face depending on its Z value. To apply the colours to each of these phases, we now need to do a bit of vector maths. Here is the equation that we need to recreate in the shader graph. When the input value is 1, then the right hand side of the equation is equal to 0, so we will only get the ground colour. Conversely, when the input value is 0, then the left hand side goes to 0, so we'll only get the cliff colour. To recreate this equation in the shader graph, firstly add two hue saturation value nodes, one for each colour, and then set them to their respective colours. For the ground colour, we'll add a vector math node set to multiply, and then connect our input value and the ground colour to it. For the cliff colour, we do the same thing. The only additional step is that we firstly need to subtract the input value from 1. We can do this with an additional math node set to subtract mode and with the first value set to 1. Finally, we just need to combine our two vectors with a final vector math node set to add and then connect the output of this to the base colour. And that's it. As you can see, the faces are now automatically being coloured. We can modify the threshold value to our liking, and of course we can continue to edit the terrain to see how the colours will be applied to it. Now unfortunately, if we want to import this terrain into an engine, then depending on the engine, the shader may not work with it. However, it shouldn't be too difficult to set up an equivalent shader to do the same thing in the engine. For example, here is the same shader recreated using Unity's shader graph. That's all for now. If you found this video helpful, then make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And if you use this tutorial to create something, I'd love to see it. So make sure to join my Discord server to show it off. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.